really know when you need to scale and grow a new business. And, you know, you sort of like get on this trajectory, things are going well, you're sticking to your budget. All of a sudden you realize you may be growing faster than you, you know, expected. Maybe you're not, but how do you, how do you know like what that right time is? And, and, you know, this risk of course, with everything that we're doing and in, in new being a new business owner, but from going from a passion project into a real business, you know, what, what are some of the markers there that you think people really have to be aware of? First, I'd say it's really interesting because um, there are 30 million small businesses in the United States, 23 million of them are sole proprietors. And so there's a huge portion of businesses that are choosing to stay small, where it is a lifestyle for themselves that they want to pursue. And so those dynamics are great if you want to keep doing the work that you're doing and that's what you enjoy, or you're the only one who could do it and you just want to do your craft. Um, and then sometimes people just don't want to deal with the problems of a bigger business. Um, mm -hmm. And they much prefer to just keep it small, keep it exclusive, keep it to manage their lifestyle. And so that's okay if that's your choice. But if you decide that you want to scale, um, there's lots of ways you can go do that. Um, first, by thinking of who you might need to go hire to do that. There are a mm -hmm. lot of reasons why you might hire someone, either because you don't have the skill, you don't have the time, um, you need um, to multiply your expertise. And so we provide a framework for like, how do you know when to hire and yeah. when to hire full-time versus part-time? And then- there are a lot of dimensions that you can pursue around different product lines, different business expansion opportunities, international expansion opportunities. So that you can think through frameworks of like, how do you want to grow your revenue if that's what you're looking to do? Um, and so we walk through that a lot in the book to try to make it easy for someone to understand if these are the sets of questions you're thinking about around how to grow your revenue, you might consider putting yourself in this mentality of fast growth and then kind of putting your foot on the accelerator, both with employees as well as new business options to pursue. Yeah, no, that's great. And it's so interesting. I mean, look, I think some people look at this opportunity to reinvent some part of their lives, especially again, with all that we've gone through in the last few years, it's brought up a lot of opportunities or questions for so many but a reinvention doesn't have to happen in five minutes. I mean, there are those and there are little things we can do to tweak some part of our life and it's an aha moment and it just kind of changes everything. And there are 10 year plans. And I think as you're, you know, sort of discussing this, when is the right time and what is the right strategy? If you don't have to be in a hurry <laughs> to build this company for some reason, or you're meeting some need that just really needs that immediate attention, it is really important, right, to be able to pace yourself and make sure you're doing it right. You know, usually cash flow is the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and cash flow is really different than revenue. Um, and so you can even think of like the vendors that you use and work with around your home. Like if you have a gardener and they bill you on a monthly basis and then it takes you three weeks to pay them. Like just think of that cash flow dynamic and how negative that is for the gardener. Yeah. versus taking an immediate payment. Yeah. And so <laughs> oftentimes people, if they want to expand, they have to think about how to buy inventory capital or even how to buy, how to invest in working capital themselves so that they could go build their business. And that's not always available at the smallest companies. Right. You know, often if you walk into a traditional bank, the smallest loan they'll want to issue is a hundred thousand dollars, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, or many even two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And if you think about what that implies, it implies a multi million dollar revenue business, yeah, for that size loan. Yeah. And so, if you're a coffee shop, a beauty shop, a nail salon, an e commerce business at home, you know, you need a five thousand dollar line of credit in order to grow, in order to get inventory, you don't need the two hundred and fifty thousand. It's a great and point. So, Getting access to that type of capital can be critical in order to help change the trajectory from being a micro business that's more of a lifestyle business to being one where you can really push the envelope on growth. Yeah, 
you do realize that you are making everybody that is going to listen to this want to get you on the phone and say, how, how do I, how do I get a piece of your mind and your brains? And you have so much wisdom, but I have to tell you, and I, I'm sort of holding it up for those who are only hearing this and not seeing this, but Self-Made Boss, this book is incredible. The stories, and I love that you have incredible stories of real people. Um, in my book, I do the same thing. I feel like if you can see that someone else has gone through that journey and it's so relatable, they feel like they can, you know, that like, that's me. That's a real person. That's not just looking at someone successful going, how on earth did they get there? And so I love that you do that, but there was so much practical, practical information advice in here. And we're putting the links in the chats and we're going to be putting them in the in the show notes for the podcast. 